All right, so let's talk about PTH metabolism, parathyroid hormone. So where does the parathyroid hormone come from in the first place? Well, remember we have, it's found in the thyroid glands, right? So let's say here's my thyroid and we have roughly four parathyroid glands, right? We have our superiors, our inferiors. Where do the superiors come from embryologically speaking? Correct, the pouches, the brachial pouches, but which one's third or fourth? So remember the fourth brachial pouches go to the superior end, the third pharyngeal pouches or brachial pouches make our inferior parathyroid hormone. <clears throat> so, oh, one other thing, side note, what else comes from the third pharyngeal pouch? The thymus. So remember in D. George, they're missing their third and fourth pharyngeal pouches, i.e. the thymus is also missing and that's why they have T cell deficiencies and basically non-bacterial infections like viruses and fungus, fungi, etc. All right, let's get back to PTH. So parathyroid hormone, what does it do? Well, basically it does three things. So the first place is gonna do is gonna go is the bone. Let's say that's my bone, right? And what is it going to do? Well, it's going to cause calcium resorption, calcium and phosphate. Calcium and phosphate resorption. What does that mean? Basically, it's chewing on the bone, right? Like a, like, like a dog chewing on a bone. Just chewing and chewing and chewing and chewing away. And in doing so, it releases calcium and phosphate. So how does it do this? Uh, PTH is going to go down to a specific cell known as the osteoblast, say B for blast. And it's going to tell osteoblast, it's going to say, hey, osteoblast, I need you to do me a favor. Can you go, can you go tell osteoclast to, to start getting, to, to get to work, please? So the osteoblast, using his rank ligand, right? So I'll just put an R here. His rank ligand is going to uh, stimulate the rank ligand receptor. So let's say here's the receptor for it. So that's that's that rank L, <clears throat> rank L, rank L receptor stuff that they like to mention. So remember, the osteoblast have the ligand, osteoclasts have the receptor. So the rank ligand is found in the osteoblast and it goes and stimulates the osteoclast and it says, hey osteoclast, PTH told me to tell you uh, we need more calcium and phosphate. And he will commence to chew away, quote unquote, right? Chew away at the bone. Now, if for whatever reason, let's just say hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, we have too much chewing away, what can happen is that the bone will become inflamed. They call that osteitis. So it'll become inflamed, and not only that, I'm gonna do something like this, right? Inflamed, not only that, but you're gonna get a little bit of fibrosis as well. And you might even get a couple of cysts. Let me put a cyst right here for you. You might get a little cyst right there. So they call this osteitis fibrosa cystica. Osteitis fibrosa cystica is classically um, a, a, a side effect or complication of excessive parathyroid hormone uh, to the bone. Okay, so <clears throat> this is what's happening at the level of the bone. Let's continue. What else does uh, parathyroid uh, hormone do? Well, he's going to move towards the kidneys. And what is he going to do in the kidneys? Very similarly, he's going to cause an increase of calcium reabsorption. However, it'll cause us to lose phosphate. So, now that we have lost the phosphate and we've, we're increasing calcium, uh, essentially what else is happening is that at the same time, parathyroid is going to stimulate, so I'm gonna come over, put over here, it's gonna stimulate vitamin D. So vitamin D, he comes into the kidneys in this 24, 25, let's say cholecalciferol, I'm just gonna put vitamin D. 24, 25, vitamin D. It comes into the kidney looking like this. And then with the help of alpha-1 hydroxylase, 
What is alpha one going to do? Alpha one is going to add one. Alpha one is going to add one to vitamin D. And in doing so, it converts it into 125 vitamin D. 125 cholecalciferol is the active form of vitamin D. So what does this vitamin D do then? Well, he will head towards the GI tract. So let's say this is my GI tract. And what is it going to do? It's going to uh, cause us to reabsorb from the diet calcium and phosphate. Only that this right here is meant uh, for bone growth. It's going to help with bone mineralization, okay? So with that, three areas, remember three areas or three places that parathyroid hormone goes. It goes to the bone, stimulates calcium resorption and phosphate resorption, goes to the kidneys, and in the kidneys is gonna cause calcium reabsorption, is gonna lose, is gonna force us to lose phosphate, and it's gonna head towards the, uh, it's also gonna stimulate uh, the enzyme alpha-1 hydroxylase, and therefore give us vitamin D, active vitamin D. This active vitamin D is then gonna go to the stomach and cause us to reabsorb calcium and phosphate to help build bone. So <clears throat> with that being said, how can we differentiate primary versus secondary hyper or hypoparathyroidism? So let's say here I have primary hyper hypo. So let's say, how do I differentiate it? Well, we're going to start off with PTH. Then we go to calcium and then we go to phosphate. So in primary hyperparathyroidism, we're going to have high PTH, clearly, uh, high calcium, and low phosphate. Well, then what about hypo? Just flip the arrows. Just flip the arrows. Low PTH, low calcium, high phosphate. What's the most common cause for primary hyperparathyroidism? Exactly, a parathyroid adenoma. So let's say, let's see here, where is this? Let's just say we have a adenoma, right? So some tumor releasing way too much PTH. See that? Okay, and vice versa. <clears throat> Most common cause for primary hypoparathyroidism. Well, maybe the patient had a thyroidectomy, right? Maybe uh, part of the thyroid had to go. He, they were suffering from hyperparathyroidism or whatever, whatever cause. The idea is they would mention that he underwent neck surgery or he had a thyroid disorder and they removed the thyroid. Then he would present with signs and symptoms of hypocalcemia. So let's move forward. So now we understand primary hyper versus hypo. But what about secondary? Secondary hyper versus hypo. This is what I want you to think when it comes to secondary, okay? 90% of the time, secondary hyper hypoparathyroidism, it has to do with vitamin D. 90% of the time, something with vitamin D, either too much or too little vitamin D. So let's say primary hyperparathyroid. So we're going to talk, let's say we have, we're going to start off with calcium. Then we have PTH and phosphates. So if I have too little, right, too little vitamin D, then my calcium is going to drop, right? Maybe they're not eating it. If my calcium drops, parathyroid hormone has to increase, and then, then therefore phosphate would decrease. So then what if vice versa? What if they're taking too much vitamin D? Well, then calcium should be high, PTH would drop, and phosphate would, would increase. So <clears throat> what are some other causes? Well, maybe they have like Crohn's disease, right? Or, some, or any malabsorption disease and they're unable to reabsorb vitamin D. Uh, or maybe they just, they lack sunlight. Um, maybe they work a night shift. Maybe it's a baby who's not receiving vitamin D, right? Mom's forgetting, mom has forgotten to give to him. Remember vitamin D is not found in breast milk. So those could be some causes of vitamin D deficiency. 
But what about too much vitamin D? Well, other than hypervitaminosis, uh, granulomas, granulomatous diseases within the macrophage, uh, it has the ability to stimulate alpha-1 uh, hydroxylase. So if a patient has a disease such as sarcoidosis, where they have non casein granulomas, these granulomas have the potential of stimulating or activating rather vitamin D. And in doing so, guess what? You have hypercalcemia. So these are just some, some ways for you to look at it, uh, to look at this. Uh, last thing is what if a patient comes in and they have renal failure, right? The kidneys are damaged. So let's say chronic renal failure. So then what will happen? Well, if my kidneys aren't working, I can't reabsorb calcium. So calcium is going to drop. And therefore, of course, we know PTH should increase. But we should, be, we should be able to get rid of phosphate. But because the kidneys are damaged, phosphate levels are going to increase. So this is the pattern that I want you all to see. If parathyroid hormone and calcium are going in the same direction, see, whether up or down, this is a primary problem, okay? If parathyroid hormone and calcium are going in opposite directions, it is a secondary problem, okay? And last one, if parathyroid hormone and phosphate are going in the same, uh, in the same way, chronic renal failure.